Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial on the Sony defocus effect in Sony Vegas. So let's go ahead and open up Sony Vegas so we can begin the tutorial. Okay and once you have Sony Vegas loaded and your video in the timeline, go ahead and click the video effects icon in the lower right hand corner of the video track. And now this window will pop up and go ahead and scroll down until you get Sony Defocus. It is the first one in the D's. And then add it and click OK. And you'll notice that you have this window appears. Uh, looks pretty familiar to the past, but you have some different uh, options than usual. So the first one is the radius. And you might be thinking of radius as circle thinking, oh, okay, so I can only, I can defocus a little circle of it and make it bigger. But that's not what this means in here. The radius is just the amount of defocus. So as I slide this up, you can see how much greater the defocus gets from zero to 10. So I'm gonna bring it back down to maybe like uh, three. And so you guys know, in your defocus, um, there are what's called blooms, and a bloom is sort of the blurred, blurred part. So if you see, if I bring this down to zero, my like the outline of my shirt is right here. You see that with my mouse right over here. But if I bring it up a little bit, you notice that the outline of my shirt is still here, but goes all the way until out here. The area of blurriness between the out real outline of my shirt right about here and the blurred part, the outline of the blurred part, is called the bloom. And so just so you guys know that so you're familiar when we move on. Uh, next we have the iris shape and this is supposedly changing the shape of your bloom but if you change it You'll see some sort of difference, but you can't even make out the shape of what it is anyway. So I'm just going to keep it at circle. And next we have the orientation. And what this would do, it would spin your iris shape in 360 degrees in a complete circle. But since I have a circle, you can't really see that. So let me make it something like a uh, heptagon if I change this. You can kind of see the little difference. It's very subtle because it's just spinning your shape in a circle. Maybe if I increase the radius, you guys. Yeah, it, you can see it a little bit better there. It's a very subtle effect. And next we have the disc curvature. And what this does is it adjusts the shape and intensity of the intersection of the bloom. So if I brought this all the way up, so you can, so the blooms are greater, and I move this around, you can kind of see a little bit of adjustment as I go on. So another very subtle effect, so don't bother wasting so much time with this. Okay, and now we have the bloom threshold. And what this does, it'll control the level where the bloom occurs on light sources. So the higher this is, the fewer light sources will be blooming, and the lower this is, the more light sources will be blooming. So you see, first, if I bring this all the way down, you have all, you have all that light source because everything ha is reflecting light. So everything has light and is showing all these blooms. But as I bring this up, fewer lights will bloom, making it look a little bit more um, uh, more like the original colors they are. And next we have the bloom strength, and this will just control the intensity of the bloom. Well here, let me bring this down a little bit, and so if this is down, that's what it'll look like. But as I bring this up, see how the intensity of the blooms are getting bigger and it's just a lot brighter and you can even see that this whole white part there 
is the wall, and then these little circles are the monitors, and they're even covering my face, you can see, because my face would be right about there. So unless you don't mind stuff getting cut off and you kind of like the way that looks, um, feel free to use it. Cause, I mean, this to me sort of seems like the effect if you were showing someone's perspective who was sort of squinting. So this is sort of like a squinting effect. And then as they open their eyes, you can sort of bring it down and have everything look a little bit more normal like that. So that would be a cool effect if you wanted to use it for that. And last, we have the Reduce Flicker, and you're not going to notice a change in your video by clicking this, but what it does, it will pre-filter your um, footage in case there is any filtering or flickering in the output. So it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep this on just to already, just so you don't have to worry about a possible flicker in when you're playing your video. So that's it for the defocus effect. I hope you guys like this tutorial. Um, please remember, uh, if I can get 100 subscribers or 300 views on any of my videos, you guys will get some cool stuff such as new blue video effects or Sony Vegas Pro. And please remember to subscribe, like, and comment. And if you have any questions, email me at ad.videoeditor at gmail.com. And I will see you tomorrow.